So, do we have any celebrity guests on this week or anything? Is there any any uh, anyone scheduled? Well, Warwick is still missing. He's MIA. Um, I'm pretty worried about him. I've I've put up posters on um on notice boards and oh I've dear. put an ad out in the um the Metro newspaper in London town asking if anyone had seen him. Um, the only picture I had of Warwick Davis was him in the role of the leprechaun. Yeah. But I'm hoping it's a good enough likeness, likeness that we'll get some sort of response and people will get in contact with me if they find mm. him. Because, you know, I don't know how he, he'll he cope on his own. He's only a little fella. So we've got no Warwick. Um, but in his stead, we have... You're not going to believe this, Lewis... No. We have the the fabled actor, raconteur, television personality, film right. star, Brian Blessed is here, ladies and gentlemen. Really? Round of applause. Round of applause. Holy crap. Applause. Woohoo! Applause. Yay! Yay! I can't really clap because so I have to press this button when I turn my mic on, but clap, yay. Clap, clap. Hello! Is that Lewis there? Yes, it is. It's very nice to have you on the show, Brian. It's very good to hear your voice. It's lovely to be here. Well, um, I must admit, we it's hadn't loud. really planned on on on, ha- on having you here, uh, but but we have got some questions for dwarves. Would you be willing to answer those? I'm willing to give it a go, Lewis. I'm up for anything. You know me. <laughs> First question. This is these are, these are some questions sent in by um by Matt Summers. When and how did you meet Simon? I mean, how did you end up coming on this show? I met him in Tesco last night in the biscuit aisle. <laughs> okay. W- were you were you purchasing biscuits yourself, or were they for a friend? Uh, <laughs> what a fucking weird question. Um, <laughs> what biscuits Brian were you purchasing, Brian? He's sort of he's 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 quite pensive. He's given this question some thought. Um, they were for my daughter, Rosalind. Right. <laughs> he, he's, he's buying them for his daughter. Yeah. Is has she got a beard like yours as well, Brian? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He hasn't. <laughs> so, Brian, what's your current uh, acting status? Any TVs or sh- or movie shows in in the works? Movie shows. Movie shows? Yeah. It's a movie show. <laughs> Any TVs or movie shows? I'm on stage in the London town. Uh-huh. Um, what are you... What, what? Are you in a play or something, Brian? It's a musical! <laughs> right. It's a musical. It's very interesting. So you're singing, are you? I didn't know. I didn't know you I sang. I didn't know you could sing. I don't sing. I dance! <laughs> He dances. That's lovely. So you've got all these questions for dwarves, mm. and we we haven't we haven't got a dwarf on this week. Because um, Brian Blessed is quite a tall man. Um, I'm sure if you looked at his Wikipedia article, Lewis, you could tell. Yeah. You know how old he is. Well, I, I won't. I won't ask that. Brian. Brian. Um. How do <laughs> how do magnets work? It's magic. <laughs> okay. Uh. What would be your uh, ideal woman? Or I, I guess you're married. You must be married. Um, what's your wife like? Uh, Is that very <laughs> what do you want to ask? What's he going to say to that? What's your <laughs> wife like? <laughs> She's horrible! <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you can't say that. Oh my god. She's a right battle axe! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What if she's listening to this? <laughs> oh my god! Hello, and welcome to TTT. So, 
of course, um, Brian Blessed, he's he's most famous for playing the role of um, Hagrid in the Harry Potter movies. What? That's what he's that's what he's no, famous he's for, really, isn't it? That was uh, what? That was Robert Carl. Robert Carlyle. Coltrane. Robert Carlyle played the role. <laughs> <laughs> what is Brian Blessed most famous for? I think Brian Blessed, he's most famous for being Brian Blessed. Isn't that right? Yes, Brian Blessed. <laughs> I'm Brian Blessed. <laughs> Brian Blessed is an English actor and adventurer. He is known for his loud, booming voice and hearty, king-sized portrayals. Would you say that was accurate, uh, accurate description? Yes! I wrote the article on Wikipedia about <laughs> myself! <laughs> I've just found out your wife's name. It's, it's Hildegard. That's a very, um... That's what I sort of expected. Terrible name for a terrible woman! Okay. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry to bring that up. Oh dear. Um... Is there anything else you, you want to ask him? Because he's quite busy. Hold on. I'm he's not just going to hang that. around here. I think he's gotten a bit bored. He's, he's wandered off down to the kitchen. Um, oh. Brian, what are, you, what are you doing down there? I'm making a jam sandwich! Oh, he's, he's he's making a sandwich. Can you hear that? Can you hear yeah, that? yeah. He is quite loud. I mean, my God. I think most of London can hear him. God, I wonder what he's like in bed. Do you think he's that noisy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's right, Hildegard! Keep doing that! Oh, God. That was a bit of uh, pre-recorded footage of Brian Blessed. Um, I've been bugging his house. He's come back now. He's got his jam sandwich. He's quite happy. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I've got a question for Brian. Me. You've got a, you've got a bit of jam. You have got a bit of jam in your beard there, mate. Um, you might want to just. So have you got anything to ask him whilst he nibbles on his jam sandwich? Jake Railton. Um, I was having this argument with my friend whilst eating a full English breakfast. He noticed that I had eaten all the white stuff around the egg, but not the yolk. I usually save it till last. I want to know how you eat your eggs. Right. So, so we had a guy email in yeah. right now, asking Brian Blessed a question about how he eats his eggs. Yeah, yeah. So, Brian, how do you, how do you eat your eggs? Scrambled! I can believe that. I can believe that. How do you, I mean, how do you scramble them? You know, do you add add a bit of milk, a bit of cream, or, or butter, or anything? I just shout at them! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is going to be awful, isn't it? This is going to be so bad. <laughs> Hello, this is Kenny Baker, and I listen to the young bud. That is just weird. You want to oh. say, this is Kenny Baker and then what he's famous for? Hello, this is Kenny Baker. I'm famous for being a dwarf and I listen... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello. God, I can't do it now. Hello, this is Kenny Baker, and I'm famous for being the dwarf who was inside of R2-D2 in the Star Wars franchise of movies. And I listen to the Oak <laughs> I've got a series of questions that I can ask you. Mm -hmm. You have to, um... You have to have your iTunes up. Okay. Or your, your music program of choice. Right, go on then. And you... You have Shuffle... Randomize on, and the answers to each of the question are the the titles of the track that come up. Okay. So, have, have you got your iTunes ready and on standby yes. and, and ready to go? Give me a second. Ready. Okay. I have okay. three thousand four hundred and sixty items. Welp. That's an that's an awful lot of illegal music you've got on your computer there, Lewis. 
I've I've not got a lot of music though. A lot of it is uh, audio books and things. Okay, well that's fine then, because those things are a public domain. <laughs> go on then. Oh, go God. on then. Okay, question one: If someone says, "Is this okay?" You say. I say. The Adventure of the Noble Bachelor. Wow. That doesn't really make any sense at all. Okay. So, you go to the next next song, and the question is, how would you describe yourself? Before our very eyes. Wow. That's deep, man. That's deep. Okay. How about... Yeah, that is pretty deep. What do you like in a girl? Jeffrey Miller Interview 8. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, okay. Jeffrey Miller Interview 8 is what you like in a girl. That's, um, yeah. This is why you will die alone. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't enough girls out there that have enough, um, you know, they don't have an awful lot of Jeffrey Miller Interview 8 in them. Okay, question four. How do you feel today? Uh, hypnotic tango. Oh, that's good. That's good. What's your motto? Now, this should hopefully work. E-0-B-E-A-6-C-C-E-3-1-B-5-6-6-B-8-4-6-F-0-A-E-D-4-B-A-8-E-D-O-5-dot-M-P-3. Um, Are you a robot or something? I think that's... <laughs> I think that's one of the ones you sent me. It's hexadecimal. That's that woman who says weird stuff. What? She goes like, you are listening to the yog part. Do you remember it was that? Oh, God. Oh, God, that. Yeah, yeah. We're Hi, gonna some... I'm Katy Perry from Hot and Cold, and you're listening to the yog part. <laughs> yeah. It's like a man's voice, yeah. though. I'll play it. I'll play it on the yog oh, part. Oh, God. We've got some new liners that people will be able to hear. That would be nice. Oh, man. Okay, so... We're up to question seven. What do your friends think of you? <laughs> the End by Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> the End. <laughs> your friends think The End when they look at you. What do you think of your parents? Heaven. Top 100 ah. chance. You look at your parents oh, and you think, Heaven. Won't be long and they'll be up there. <laughs> Hopefully. What is two plus two? Uh. Thunder in my heart. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, it's probably, it's quite unlikely that you would have gotten that question right. Mm. Um, it would have been good if you, um, if you had a song by the Four Tops Ooh. as the result of that one. I don't have any of that. <gasps> oh. oh, okay. What do you think of me? Super Mario World Monstrous Turtles. <laughs> well, thanks, yeah. pal. Thanks, pal. That's <laughs> right. Likewise to you too, buddy. Oh, man. What do you think of your secret crush? I'm not saying who it is. You Raise Me Up by Westlife. Oh. oh Why is that That's on beautiful. There? That's beautiful. Oh, it's on... Well, um... you've got every number one. Yeah, I've got every UK you? number one. It's number one in 2005. You raise me up. You don't have to sing it. Please Ugh. don't. Please don't. I'd rather you didn't. Okay. Okay, question 13. What is your life story? Uh, hit me with your rhythm stick. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. A bit of Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Correct. Okay. Wow. Okay, what do you think of when you see the person you have a crush on? into a music quiz. And you lay your eyes upon them. What pops into your head? The Problem of Thor Bridge by Arthur Conan Doyle. Oh, there we go. Do you never, do you not think that you should maybe create subfolders or playlists and have the music in one playlist and have audiobooks under another one? No. You know, wouldn't that just make it easier? I mean, what happens if you just want to listen to random music? Do you, are you listening to, like, Westlife and then all of a sudden you have... Harry Potter <laughs> comes on. That's me doing Stephen Fry. Harry, Harry Potter and and the man with the golden gun. <laughs> You've never read Harry Potter, have you? Good uh, God. 
having not read I Harry Potter, no. I'd love you to no. like do a little I... impression of what you think Harry Potter sounds like as an audiobook. Harry Potter turned to Hermione, his cheeks a flush, and said, Hermione, um, <laughs> what does it mean when my willy gets hard? <laughs> Hermione, <laughs> Hermione's jaw dropped to the floor as she turned to Harry and said, Are you all right? Uh, Harry, it's natural. It's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, come here. Oh, give me a kiss. Goodness <laughs> me. Oh, God, this is horrible. Let's, let's move on with the quiz, please. You do know that Harry and Hermione don't, like have any kind of relationship what? in Harry Potter. No, but they are... No, they have to be. I don't want to spoil it for you, anyone that's listening. <laughs> we just did. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't jerk. tell you who. I can't believe you've never read oh, Harry Potter God. or watched the films. I think the films are terrible, but the, the, the books are great. I haven't read all the fucking Mr. Men books. So, you know, am I missing out on that as well? Yeah, but th- no, you're not. You're not. But the thing is, Mr. Men books are designed for under five. Owned much, bitch. And Harry Potter is. They're Harry for Potter adults! Is aimed at the same. They're an adult book! That's why it's set in a school of wizardry! Harry Potter is aimed at. <laughs> Harry Potter is aimed at the same <laughs> audience as Doctor Who. And you love Doctor Who. You're a self confessed lover of Doctor Who. Yeah, Therefore, I love Doctor Who, but it makes me very angry. Do you know what I'd be like if I was watching or reading Harry Potter? I'll just go fucking ape shit. I'll go, you know, that's bullshit. <laughs> Harry would never fucking do that. Why would he, why would he do that? That's ridiculous. Oh, Voldemort, just fucking kill him. Just fucking kill him. He does. Because that's how I talk. I can't do an impression of myself. Isn't that it, odd? Harry Potter is very oh. good. It's a, it's... I don't give a shit. Come on, we've got a few questions left and we're done with this quiz, right? What will you dance to at your wedding? Uh, Love Game by Lady Gaga. Okay, what is your biggest fear? Uh, overcome. Your your biggest fear is to... Overcome. To be overcome. Okay. Nice. What's your, what's your biggest secret? <gasps> Shh, it's a secret. Down with the sickness. Come on, down with the sickness. <laughs> Uh, and the last one doesn't really make much sense, but it's um, okay. Let's let's change it. What do you make of this quiz? Uh, ever long, <laughs> ever long. There we go. It was ever long. Ever long by Fee. And that wraps up this uh, food terrible fighters, section, which is completely ever unusable. Long by food fighters, yeah. And is just I don't know. I th- Sorry. Well done. Got the wrong band there. Right. But, so, oh god, that was terrible. Fucking hell. Hello, I'm Tina Barrett from S Club 7, and I listen to the Yog Pod. Have you seen this website, S Club 7 Secrets? No. This, this, I'm interested, though. Very interested. Okay, there it is on, on my comment. Okay. If, um, if any listeners want to go to it, the URL is http colon forward slash forward slash. It's ridiculously long. D A R R Y N hyphen R E E D S dot tripod dot com slash S hyphen club hyphen seven hyphen secrets dot HTML. So what is this? Is it some sort of a bizarre conspiracy site? Uh... It's the work of a, a nutter. Right. Of of a deranged man. <laughs> Probably a yognaut. Um, just just hazarding a guess with that. Since the dawn of man, true evil had surrounded us, lurking in the darkness like a dark lurking thing, ready to pounce on any poor unsuspecting innocent fool who stumbled blindly into its path. The lord and master of this domain goes by many names. Beelzebub, the dark lord, the fallen one, Santa, and of course... The Beast. But today, as we fast approach the 20th century evil, has what taken... What do you mean, oh, we right, fast approach the 20th there. century? 
Was this website written before? Yeah, I think this is quite an old website. This website is at least yeah. 11 years old. 10 years ago. Okay. See, this is ridiculous. This this shows that it is just a paranoid conspiracy nut doing it. Okay. They think that there are hidden messages in the S Club 7 songs that when you play them backwards, reveal something secret. Right. Which is just utterly, utterly ridiculous. Because no one ever does that. Right. <laughs> But today, as we fast approach the 20th century, evil has taken not one, but seven new names. And lo, they be Tina, John, Paul, Hannah, Bradley, Rachel, Joe. Dun dun dun. So basically, um, this guy seems to think that S Club are. They think that the S stands for evil. Satan. Um, and he goes Satan through the lyrics. Club seven. What does it yeah, stand Satan for, Club. actually? Satan Club 7. Mary Whitehouse... It says... Mary Whitehouse says... As the resident morality guardian for CIBPP, all I have to say regarding the S Club 7 is quite simply, fuck them. Fuck them right in the ear. And you can fucking well quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. I'm Tina Barrett, formerly of S Club 7. I still have yet to release my my debut solo album because it's not really going very well. But um, in the meanwhile, I like to listen to the Yog Pod. Oh, it's, it's really good. Oh, Lewis and Simon are really amazing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't know why I said goodbye there. <laughs> I, just, I just felt like it was polite. This week, me and Simon are looking forward to the new Doctor Who coming out. Um, I don't know if this is a big deal to anyone beyond the UK, but we've been sort of spammed with... Yeah, they're promoting it heavily. I mean, do you reckon like people beyond England really know about Doctor Who? Is it is it popular yeah. in America or Europe? It's being shown on um, BBC America, like, a I mean, week later or something. Doctor Who's one of these things that is sort of a very British tradition, I suppose, in a way. It's something we have close to our hearts. It's a long-running okay. British TV show that is set mostly in Britain. Or, you know, all the actors are British and the Doctor's a very British character. It's a very BBC programme, you know. It was all very... It was like a family, but slightly scary sci-fi show. <laughs> but, I mean, did you ever watch any of the old ones? Yeah. I mean, the only one I really remember is from, um... Oh, God. I watched pretty much all of the Sylvester McCoy ones, and he was a bad Doctor. So it, it kind of left a... What do you mean, a bad Doctor? Like a sour taste in my mouth. Well, he was pretty terrible at playing Doctor Who. Well, every every series the you know, took was... parts from their, their individual time. I mean, like, during the 70s and 80s, they were slightly different. And it's it's been through so many incarnations. I really can't watch the old ones, though. I mean, one time, I remember I was living in a student house. And we got delivered to the door one day a brown sort of package. Um, it was just addressed to the house. And it was... It contained about 10 VHS tapes containing really old Doctor Who like films and TV like series of TV shows weird it was really weird and cuz obviously none of the girls had ordered it they all just assumed I'd I'd bought it <laughs> and so I just sold it on eBay sold them on eBay I didn't watch them um cuz I didn't really have a VHS player and I, but I might oh, have done if I had isn't that theft what? You you basically you you made you sold something that didn't belong to you. They could have been someone you know desperately looking for them. They got delivered to the wrong address, and you're well, what do you suggest and you, I should you're have profiting done? off of it. <laughs> Handed them in to the police. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, anyway, I mean that's. I mean, I'm a fan of Doctor Who, and there was one time when I was um, about 16 in London, and uh, one of the doctors was doing a lecture tom baker um on some sort of oh my god science of dot two or something and i attended that and like i met him and had a chat with him as well which was quite cool oh. so i've actually met one of the doctors which is kind of cool 
um, it doesn't mean he's my favourite one. Because everyone sort of has a favourite Doctor, don't they? He's he's most people's favourite Doctor Who. He's a nice um, guy, Tom Baker. Like a big, blustering Englishman. I think he he's cut from the same cloth as um, Brian Blessed. They're from that same kind of old school... Yeah. Just crazy people. Who's your favourite, then? Oh, God, I don't know, really. I mean, the thing is, people's people's opinion of the Doctor is is completely decided by, you know, which Doctor they watch the most of, <laughs> you know? And we've, mm. we've had Tennant for so long. We had Tennant for so long. And I've watched is every single episode of Tennant. And I've, I've watched it recently. So when I think of the Doctor, I think of David Tennant now. It's just ingrained in me. Um... He's I mean, this is why it's going to be pretty weird to have a new guy take over. Because everyone just thinks, Doctor Who, oh, David Tennant. They don't think of it as the you know, the character, the person who changes from time to time into someone else. I think you're wrong. I think a lot of people do realise it's the character. And I mean, you saw the same thing happen when Christopher Eccleston did it for a year and then changed over to David Tennant. I mean, people were like, oh, I like Christopher Eccleston, I'm not sure I'm going to like anyone else. But actually, you know, people people got to like him quite quickly and I, th- I think the same thing will probably happen I mean I'm predicting that you'll actually in you know three weeks time after you've watched a few episodes you'll, you'll say to me yeah it's okay it's nothing great but he's okay you're not too, yeah. too disappointed I guess he does look to be I mean the thing is at its heart Doctor Who's a kids TV show yeah so there's always going to be daft things happening in it and it's you know, they know their audience very well. And, oh God, it's going to be ridiculous, isn't it? There's just going to be utterly ridiculous things going on. And I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to get angry. And elsewhere in the country, there's going to be all these young kids watching it and going, Yay! <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to be going, You son of a bitch! What are you doing? And the doctor wouldn't get into that situation. Why would he act like that? What's going on? Oh no, look at those special effects. Oh Jesus Christ! That monster's ridiculous, and all the kids will be going, "Yay, yay! <laughs> this is the best TV show ever, Mummy!" Fuck off! Uh, says JK. Well, yay! The thing is, are you lagging, or is like, I mean, is it your internet connection, or is it your brain? My brain's I'm not sure lagging. What's going on? <laughs> 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 I'd rather yeah. have a bowl of uh... <laughs> <laughs> See the thing is you're yeah. gonna enjoy watching these Doctor Who episodes with this guy. I predict that you're gonna enjoy them and you're gonna yeah. come on to vent and you're gonna complain about them. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna enjoy watching it, that that experience, that like hour of watching it, and then immediately afterwards I'm gonna think that was the biggest pile of shit ever. Even though during it I'm probably gonna be like clapping at the television. You'll be like a kid. Yay! And... Yay! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> oh, I love you, Doctor Holmes. Oh! And then I'll turn off the telly and I'll go, well, that was fucking shite. <laughs> and I'll just rant about it to people on the internet. I'll post on forums. Saying, you know, lol, what a joke, worst doctor ever. Yeah. A at the end, yeah, ever. That's how British teenagers talk these days. <laughs> doctor so, who. also, in the, in the related, oh. relatively related news, science kind of news, the uh, Large Hadron Collider hasn't destroyed the world. Breaking so news. World's still here. <laughs> yeah. It was a load of bollocks about this whole thing. It's like, do you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the times before trains. And when people were getting on the first like trains that would go above 50 miles per hour. What? People thought that if you rode, if, you, if a human rode above 50 miles per hour, the bo- human body wouldn't be able to take it. And it would the just fuck? like collapse and implode and stuff. It's like people, first of all, didn't know whether humans would be able to go into space and go into zero gravity, you know, when they were sending up the first satellites, because they thought that 
you know, it might not be possible. You know, the, the, with no gravity, you, could, you might not be able to swallow properly, or you might right. not be able to do all this stuff. You may not be able to swallow properly. They probably had um, buffet cars from the very start on those trains, and people had a cup of tea in front of them, and they were just watching the world whiz by, and they were worried that they wouldn't be able to swallow the tea somehow. <laughs> Like the G-force of moving. No, no, no. I mean, that's the one. That's about space, though. But you know, people were worried about it, and and obviously they had to send a few trains out. You know, with brave sort of pilots, you know, to to test if you could go at 50 miles per hour, um, so like successfully, you know. And I think I think there was a there was a mm. bit of sort of suggestion that it wasn't safe, you know, at the time. Um, but, you know, people weren't supposed to go that fast. It's kind of like that, but modern version, you know. Well, although physicists have shown that, you know, in all of these studies and examples, that you know, there's no chance of a black hole forming. Ignorant people like to 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 cut and run with this kind of um, sensationalist stuff. Um, well, there was there's no chance of a black hole just magically appearing. So I don't think there was any danger in any well, case. Well, if people are fucking you? around with subatomic particles, you can't really predict what the hell's going to happen. If they knew what was going to happen, they wouldn't have run the experiment in the first place, because the whole point of running the experiment is to see what happens. Well, yeah, but um, even so, like, the, the sort of things they're doing are not measured to be sufficient to produce... A stable black hole. Well, no, I mean the the issue is that there could be some sort of chain reaction started, and then a tiny, tiny, microscopic black hole is formed, and then it just sucks in matter and just grows, and then the Earth is gone, and then the solar system's gone, and then basically the whole universe is just a singularity, which would be quite useful because if you've ever had your dinner on your lap and sat down in front of the telly and then realised that the remote is on the other side of the room. If you're in a singularity, then that remote is actually part of you. So you don't have to put your dinner somewhere, get up, walk over, get the remote, then turn the telly over. But also just, the telly, the dinner, just... <laughs> all that is also already part of you. Yeah, yeah, the dinner's already in your stomach, so you don't have to eat. <laughs> Your stomach is already there. It's just all singularity. The telly's in your okay. stomach as well, unfortunately. <laughs> um, can, a bit like a Teletubby. Wow. Must be awkward for Time Teletubbies. Time for Teletubbies. Time for I mean, Teletubbies. If you, if you want to watch something on telly, say, you know, Doctor Who, you want to watch Doctor Who and you're a Teletubby, you can't watch it on yourself. You've got to get a friend, another Teletubby, to watch it on their belly. And it's just, you know, it's just inches above their groin, and you're staring at it for an hour. <laughs> That's got to be a little bit awkward. Do they have to, like, sit in front of you as well, and then they can watch what you've got on your telly? Yeah. I guess the problem is with the sound. You know, if you've both got the sound on, and you're not I wearing, guess you have like, to... headphones. I, I don't guess know you if have there's to some plug kind of jack. A headphone you jack. Plug... I don't know where the jack would be. Uh... <laughs> 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 Somewhere around the back. <laughs> yeah. So you've each got oh God. your headphones plugged into the other person's <laughs> headphone jack. You're sitting there in front of each other, watching... Yeah, staring down at each other's bellies, so navel-gazing. One of you's watching, like, EastEnders, and the other one's watching Bargain Hunt. Oh, it's a hard decision to make, isn't it? Which one would you watch, EastEnders or Bargain Hunt? I mean, that would just be a couple of Teletubbies. I mean, what if there's, like, you know seven or eight Teletubbies. How would it work that in that situation? Would there be a chain? <laughs> or what about in a would pub? one of them just a volunteer? Pub and you, 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 you're walking past it and it says, you know, widescreen television, you know, we show, we've got the match on today. <laughs> and you walk in and it's just, it's it's just, just... Teletubbies <laughs> stapled to the wall. <laughs> just everywhere. I, oh, I was thinking it would just be a really, really fat one. No, there's hundreds of these Teletubbies just all stuck up on walls. Are they dead, do you think? They're still alive, but they're in a lot of pain. <laughs> oh, they'd Jesus rather they'd, they were dead. What kind of post-apocalyptic world have you just envisaged? Yeah, well, it's alright if you're not a Teletubby. I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, there's, there's tellies everywhere. Could you, like, surgically remove the telly from a Teletubby? No, and then, like, no, you know, it's part it of the Teletubby. 
Oh. And you, if you kill the Teletubby, then the TV doesn't work, so you've got to keep him alive. Right. Barely alive. Oh my god. <laughs> you got these starving Teletubbies. Where were we, by the way? I don't know, Teletubbies, I think. Um, what was before that? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just forget it. It's too late. Oh, your Large Hadron Collider, of course. Um, oh, right, yeah. There's a really interesting scientific thing. What is the coldest place in the universe? Um, your heart. No, it's actually um, somewhere on Earth. <laughs> because uh, it's in a lab somewhere where they've reduced the temperature to a fraction yeah, of a Kelvin a lab above because, absolute zero. Well, because space is actually a fascinating slightly fact. warmer than absolute zero because it is just, you know, warmed by all the fusion that goes on sort of thing very slightly. So we can actually go colder than that on Earth using refrigeration. Where's the hottest place in the universe, hmm, though? That's a good question. My pants. Oh, uh, okay. Your heart is the coldest place in the universe. It's cold, it's dark in there. There's no room for any love or warmth. What do you mean? I love you, man. I love a lot of people. I don't have a cold heart. Who do you love? Um. Oh, that, that girl from uh, that film. Uh, what was she in? Rachel Hurd Wood, who was in um, Dorian Gray, yeah. Dorian Gray? I, well, I guess, you know, I wasn't really taken by Did her, you watch... to be honest, Lewis. But then I think she reminded me of a cousin oh. too much. Yeah, that I can have. put you off, if a girl looks like uh, someone like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm Brian Blessed's wife, and I listen to the Yuckbot. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can say that people did the videos for the Yuckbot challenge, and we can announce the next challenge, which we have to come up with. So, because I like the idea of people filming themselves doing stupid shit. I mean, not dangerous stuff, just stuff that's a bit silly. You know? So we had a couple of really excellent videos sent in by people opening cans um, and getting sprayed, which was pretty awesome. I love it. So thank you very much for those. There, I posted them on the uh, site. You watch a 30 second video of someone doing something fairly <laughs> odd, but benign, <laughs> and you think, what the hell? Yeah. I, I like the idea of people doing stuff in their gardens, because I like looking at people's gardens. Uh... <laughs> okay. Well... People can just film their gardens. The person who has the nicest Maybe garden... Like they could dig a hole or something. <laughs> Search for buried treasure. Mm. Search for buried treasure. You have to dig a hole. Because this is something I did as a kid, right? I was so excited. I had like a phase. I went through a phase in my life for about a year. When I would just dig holes everywhere. And try and find buried treasure. I was convinced that just by digging holes in the garden, if I dug deep enough, I'd find something valuable. That's a bit odd. So I want people to do that. So you that. want people to just dig up their parents' back gardens <coughs> to try and find treasure? Well, if they ask their parents, they'll say, you know, Mum, is there any way you particularly want me, you know, you wouldn't mind me digging a hole? I don't know about this. It's a lot of effort for someone to go to. Digging a hole is hard work, Lewis. It's hard work. I'm not sure about it. I mean, you've dug loads of holes... I'm sure you're aware of just how much work goes into <laughs> the digging of a hole. And also, what do you do with all the dirt I want people to search for buried treasure. Dig up. You have to, like, dig a second hole to what? put the dirt into. No, you just put it back in the hole when you're finished. And then you dig a hole somewhere else. What if you, like, start digging in your back garden and you find the body of, like, your old cat that died when he was six? <laughs> and you just start crying, cradling this little... That's not going to happen, oh god. I mean, that'd be horrible. I think, I'm not sure this is a good idea. You're I'm convinced really, that I'm people's convinced. back gardens are going to be filled with skeletons of tiddles rather than any kind of gold hoard. Well, I think it's much more likely they'll find a dead household pet rather than buried pirate treasure. <laughs> yeah. I really think uh, it's too well... much effort for people to go to. 
I mean, the whole Coke can thing is pretty easy. you just got to have a can and just film yourself doing it. And only two people have been bothered to do that. <laughs> How many people do you think are going to respond to dig up your back garden and find treasure? Well, let's see. Let's just see. I don't want, like, massive footage of them doing it, necessarily. I just want, like, pictures of what they might have found or stories or... If you've got a little brother, maybe get him to do the digging. <laughs> yeah, you throw him a shovel and you've got a shotgun trained on him. And you just say, dig. <laughs> <laughs> he's crying, he thinks he's digging a grave. <sighs> Man, you asked for the shovel back when he dug a big enough hole and he just, <laughs> you just start <laughs> filling in the hole. <laughs> and he stood in the bottom. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> He's buried he up to his ankles. a fucking shovel full of dirt in his That's face. That's horrible. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Hello, I'm Warwick Davis. And I'm in a sewer. But I still listen to the Young Pod. And what you can do is you can actually add like an echoey sound effect onto that. <laughs> <laughs> or just the, or Maybe just some not. dripping water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think we've had a, f- a few people who've given us donations this week. Um, is that right, Simon? Yes, some very lovely listeners, lovely listeners, have been don- donating their hard-earned monies, their pocket monies from their parents to us. So who's the executive producer for this week, then? We have a tie between two listeners. Jonas... Surda, whose name I probably am not pronouncing correctly, Jonas Soda. Okay. I don't know. And the other listener is called Michael Beck, who's got a, a very lovely normal English name. So thank you for that, <laughs> Michael. Sorry, Jonas. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Thank you for having such a normal English name. Um, yeah. So how much did they donate? They donated... Should we talk about amounts? Because... I don't know. I think it's their it's their personal business, you know, how much they donate. I think we can say. I, I think we can. I don't well. know. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable okay, with it. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, that. they're the executive producers for this they week. They gave us a thousand how... pounds each, <laughs> and me and Lewis off to the Bahamas for a dirty week <laughs> together. A dirty week Ooh. drinking um, tomato, Cuba Libras. tomato juice. And, uh, and being massaged by champagne flute cab- tea. Mm-hmm. What are they call cabina, cabina mm, boys. Champagne flute cabina tea. boys. Mm-hmm. What's that called, by the way? Has it got some special, like high class name? Um, it's called spaghetti. No, 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 that's no. just too common. It has to be called like tea a la mauve or something like that. Tea a la spacca. Right. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. T Alice Spacker. So they're the executive producers this week. They will be uh, adding their names onto the. Thank you, the Jonas, list. Soda, and Michael Beck. So what what I do? You're going on our special list. When I've got like, I think we've also Carlos. The special people. Carlos is on the list because he was obviously the executive producer love you. from um from before. Because he obviously kept us going for about from the first two twenty five <laughs> episodes that we did. Uh. <laughs> He kept us going for a few months. Single handed paid keeping for all us of going. our bills, which is really nice. Um so these people will obviously go on the list and, and occasionally we'll send out care packages to, to people who are on the list of, of, of gifts and stuff, but it won't be for a little while. Um so just to let you know. Don't expect anything in the mail don't like hold tomorrow. Your <laughs> Um, oh dear! I was just thinking of what kind of things I could put in it. You know, I was obviously thinking that you know the basics, like you know the Jaffa cakes and uh, milk, raspberry jam, milk, that kind of stuff. But I was thinking that, that it might not be possible to send like food abroad to like uh, America and stuff. They might, they might not. Oh, of course you can. It's not a problem. They might get like it's seized by American customs. They might like open this package that's like Yogpod gift package. And it'll be like... Don't have to perform a controlled explosion on a few <laughs> Jaffa <cakes. laughs> What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but... um, Goodness me. So, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll sort stuff out, so it'll be cool. And, and obviously, the thing is, these people who are executive producers will stay 
on the producer list in the, in the future and um, they'll get exclusive stuff so in like a year's time or something they'll still get stuff it's like mm. lifetime membership sure. to the York Pod Club exclusive what club. the hell what? I'm not sure we should be no, that no. committed it's we not, it's not quite that bad commitment. but obviously what they can do is they can put it on their they can put it on For their CV life. that they're an executive producer of a, a popular internet podcast and it sounds like they're actually doing more than they really are yeah well that's all that executive producers do <laughs> so if you look at like films and TV and stuff the executive producer just oh, puts God. money towards it they don't actually uh, aren't actually involved so yeah you can put that down guys so you can sign that wow. after your name. Like Mark, what's his name? Michael, Michael Belt? Michael what's Bay? Michael, no. The guy who, executive producer for this show. What? Jonas Sorda. Oh, Sorda. Michael, Michael what? Beck and Jonas Jonas Sorda. Sorda. And he can say, Jonas Sorda after his name he can have, and Michael he Beck. He can have E.P. <laughs> Yogpod. <laughs> that he can put that after his name. EP EP yeah. Pod. Just get some business cards made. <laughs> and have that on yeah. there. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but just uh, make back into the EP That's a bit odd though, because obviously what <laughs> happened was two people donated the exact same amount of money. <laughs> Forty pounds exactly. I think we have to say it. Um, it's going to be worth it though. I'll pay you back. Don't worry. We're going to get forty pounds as the Jaffa cakes through your door. Yeah. So if one of them had donated one p more, <laughs> yeah, than the other, that's the that's the key to it. People have to donate numbers that aren't you know rounded, an unround oh, number, God. as they're called. So people will be do- an unround an unround number. number. I don't think that's what you call that. I've got two. I've got two whole A levels in of mathematics. Pounds. I know of euros. No, but another weird thing. Another weird thing, Simon, is that is it, these Lewis? people were not necessarily English so how did if they donated like 10 euros or whatever how did that get converted into pa- that's a bloody pounds? good question that's a bloody good question I have no idea anyway they're the, they're the executive producers so thank you guys and we'll sort we'll sort stuff out I promise thank you um, so I, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone else who donated as well um, who were they? Ryan Calhoun, again, who donated. What? Carlos Larios, Alex Beer, Joris Vigilar, magnificent name, <laughs> Sean Cameron, and Grant Lawrence. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank, appreciate thank it. Thank you very, very I much. I love you. Thank you. You're keeping us going. You're keeping us trucking. You're keeping us on on the track. On track, in a truck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank going you. full steam ahead. Okay. And that's a boat. I wonder how you're going to edit this long, rambling fucking discussion about executive producers into, like, two minutes of tight audio. I don't know. Sense. I usually manage to do it, man. It's fine. You, you're a miracle uh... worker when it comes to editing audio. <laughs> you're not going to say that after you've heard this podcast. No. It's full of crap. I'm going to go, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> And a big thank you to little Dave Yognort from Chiswick, who donated a kidney to us. Thanks a lot, Dave. We're sure to get a <laughs> thousand for that. Uh, so is there anything we want to say? I mean, Warwick, let us know if you see Warwick. We, we need to find him. Simon's worried. He's not come home for his dinner. Um, We're still looking for him. Brian Blessed, if you see him around, say hi. He'll, he'll say hello, I'm sure. He might... Pop in, is he still around here, Simon? Has he gone home? He's in the area, so, you know... He's, he's not in your house close. anymore, though. He's he's left, has he? He's Let's not stay. in my house. No, he was a guest. Yeah. He's just popped he wouldn't in just, earlier. like, and left again. come over to stay. Why not? Couldn't you put... He's not up? living here. I don't live with Brian Blessed. Maybe you should... He's got a family. Oh, yeah, of course he has. He's not going to leave his wife for me. <laughs> I mean, God knows I've begged and I've pleaded. She could, you, you could bring her in. You could bring I her here. That. I think you wouldn't be able to stand it, though. You'd just go deaf. Hildegard, where are you? <laughs> That's how he speaks, yeah, apparently. He does. I can't really do a good impression of him. Um, that was okay. It, was okay. it wasn't great. It was okay. No, it wasn't. It wasn't as good as the real thing. Um, no. Which is on this... Earlier podcast. in the podcast, if you if you just let this podcast keep playing, it will uh, go back and and 
repeat itself. It will loop, and you'll be able to hear. It will loop. Hear, hear the. Uh, it will loop. Podcast you again. know what you should do? You should end the podcast with the the beginning of the podcast to really fuck up people, so they don't know what's going on. How does this one even start? I guess we don't know yet because it has been edited, and it's just going to be a fucking mess. <laughs> I think it starts with me saying something like, So, how are you doing, Simon? That's how they usually start. Hello. I'm doing quite well, Lewis. You're listening to... Time your... becomes a loop. Time becomes a loop. Time becomes a loop. Time becomes a loop. Time becomes a loop. Thank you yeah. for listening. Cut, I've cut that I out. love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening, and everyone. Thank you for donations. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the really us. Really laboring. Thank you for end. all your <laughs> pictures the most that you send in. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I love you. Did you see the ones of your me. eye? Did you see the pictures yeah, of your eye? Yeah. What the eye? fuck oh, is that all challenge about? Challenge as well. You bastard. I don't know. Weird. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> the challenge is to digging up the garden. You s- You've already the, talked about it. Yeah, I think I. It's in there somewhere. I'll have to edit it in somewhere. We have to offer some sort of incentive for people to dig up their garden and film it and put it on YouTube. Hannah will take off her top if you don't send us in anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey <Hey-oh-ho. laughs>